So I've asked my uh, colleague, Wee Wang, who is our research director based in New York, to give a presentation on our diamond research. So I'd like to introduce Wee Yi Wang. Thank you, Jim. Good morning, everybody. It was uh, exactly two days Dr. Jim Shigley decided I need to give this a talk. <laughs> I, I, would, I would like to say I'm very pleased to have this great opportunity to talk in this great event, and I would like to thank you all for coming. It's a great pleasure to meet you here. Now, color is very important for diamond, and uh, some diamond could show very amazing color, what do we call the canary yellow. Canary is a beautiful bird, so pure yellow, bright yellow color with some white gradient to white color. So some yellow diamond could show this amazing color. So today, I'm going to take this opportunity to report to you of our recent research of this group of diamond. Nitrogen is a very important impurity in diamond, and it determines many parts of the physical property of a diamond. And of course, it's when we talk about a diamond use a gemstone, it impacts significantly the gem property of a diamond. The impurity of a nitrogen concentration could be from zero to about 1,000 ppm. It parts per minute. It can exist in three states. Could be in a single. It's simply a, a nitrogen atom replaces a carbon atom. And it can also exist in pair shape. And also could be four nitrogen and one vacancy stay in diamond lattice. It is believed that the, when a diamond formed naturally, the nitrogen initially will stay in the isolated form with a, long, with a high pressure, that's about a 5 GPA, 6 GPA, temperature from 1,000 degrees C to 1,200 degrees C, and a time, about, a time for millions or billions of years, a long time, the nitrogen will aggregate from isolated form to pair, that's A form, and from pair shape to B form. It is believed it's happened over the long geological history time. And of course, this process impacts the gem quality of a diamond significantly because the C center nitrogen absorbs selectively of blue color, so the diamond will be yellow color. But A form nitrogen and B form nitrogen, they don't absorb selectively of visible light. So diamond will be colorless. So it is a very, very fortunate in the natural process a diamond goes through this process. Otherwise, most of our natural diamond will be black because they have so many nitrogen in it. But nevertheless, there are some isolated nitrogen still in nature diamond that give the beautiful color of these stones. That's the topic we are going to address today. Here, the infrared absorption spectrum of a nitrogen. So for the A form, or for the C form, you see the two peaks, 1344 and 1130, and the A center through 2012 or 1280, and the B form nitrogen show different absorption spectrum. This is a very sensitive technology to detect trace amount of nitrogen in diamond, and it can also determine quantitatively how many ppm of nitrogen in a diamond. So you will see, I'm just going to show you some spectrum in the coming slides. There are some diamond, the isolated nitrogen is a dominant form of nitrogen purity in the diamond. That's the C form. We call this diamond type 1B diamond. So type 1B diamond is a diamond dominated with isolated nitrogen. I'm sorry, they didn't load the correct version of my slides, but I will give a try. <laughs> wow. So, so natural 1B diamond, we know it's a yellow color, but 
different from what we expected. They have a very strong yellow or greenish hue. These stones are, again, dominated by ice of nitrogen form, but could show some aggregated A form nitrogen. So the distinctive is a brownish, greenish color is from plastic deformation, which I'm going to talk a lot in today's uh, uh, presentation. They have a very strong plastic deformation that affected their geological properties. Here's a slide, basically I show you the major geological features of a natural type of 1B diamond. I'm going to give you a little bit of long introduction of my talk before I go to the Canary diamond. This diamond, again, as I said, is dominated by high proportion of sea form nitrogen. They show brownish and a greenish hue in addition to some yellow color. They have strong plastic deformation. The plastic deformation generates a brownish color and also introduce a defect called a vacancy cluster. It's a vacancy. Vacancy cluster in the long geological history could release vacancy. That a vacancy would be responsible for many defects, optical centers to be introduced to this diamond that include the amber center, H3, MV centers, GR1, that's a vacancy, and also strong H2. So these are very strong <coughs> defects that would affect the physical property and also the geological properties of this diamond. And their color are almost, kind of almost evenly distributed. One very important feature is the sulfide inclusions are very common in this diamond. They are usually single crystal instead of a stone with multiple nucleation centers. I'd like to use this slide to show you how strong the plastic formations are in this group of a diamond. This are uh, fluorescence image of a diamond taken from the diamond view distributed by De Beers. They use a very strong shortwave UV light to excite a diamond. So we see this uh, dislocation plus deformation lines. We can see the lines because in this stone, they have MV centers, which emits red orange color. And this stone show green lines because of the very strong H3 in this H3 defect in this area. Anyway, it is very important for us to remember plus deformation is an important feature for natural 1B diamond. <clears throat> so if we put this uh, together regarding what we see here, this is a pure 1B end member. Diamond is a pure 100% nitrogen in isolated form. This is an A form aggregated form. As we see, a few of them could show li limited amount of A form nitrogen, and they have very strong plus deformation. With the plastic formation goes on, defects like a vacancy, cluster, MV centers, H3, GR1, and many other centers could be introduced during the long geological history that generate brownish color or greenish color. So only very small amount, if any, of a natural 1B diamond would show the color of a real canary bird. You see the beautiful yellow color with some bright and white color gradient. So it is a very rare, well, I just want to correct the concept. Many people believe canary diamond is a 1B diamond. Actually, I want to say it is not really true. Canary diamond is not equal to natural 1B diamond. <clears throat> Here are the slides from Dr. Karen Smith. So it's one interesting thing, why some isotope nitrogen could escape could stop from aggregation from the A form and exists still in the C form as an isolated form. So these two slide pictures from Dr. Karen Smith in her research try to find the answer of this mystery. And this is a diamond from East Africa, from Zimi mine, as you can see. They have a sulfide inclusion. It is a little mystery why natural 1B diamond is dominated with a sulfide inclusion. We still don't know. But so far, the inclusion is uh, amazing. It contains some isotope that can allow us to date when this diamond will formed. So this is just a SEM scanning electron microscope image of this uh, sulfide. Here the diagram show 
the isotope of rhenium and osmium and the osmium isotope. This basically works as a clock. When the diamond is formed, including got captured, it records how old, how long time has passed. It tells us this diamond was formed about 600, 500 million years ago. It is, they are very old. So if we want to explain the 1B diamond, the ice and nitrogen, its capital aggregation because this diamond was very young, that's not really truth. This diamond were old and they formed a long time ago. So the good explanation is the diamond escaped from the aggregation of the nitrogen is the diamond after their formation were rapidly exhumed, transported to the shallow depths that the temperature was lower, so this isotope of nitrogen could escape from aggregation. So the conclusion is 1B diamond is not equal to canary diamond. Now, recently we studied a few thousand diamonds like this, with a stone small from about a one point each, about 10 point, to carat in size. As you can see here, they are very, very close in color to the real canary bird in the color. And in GI laboratory, this stone are already graded with a fancy intense or fancy vivid color. Very uniform, and uh, <coughs> we are wondering the spectroscopic geological features. So the purpose, finally, I come to my uh, end of my introduction, why we want to do this research. The purpose of this research is to try to understand the geological, spectroscopic features of a canary yellow diamond and try to build up some correlation, possible correlation between different groups of yellow diamond that was colored by isotope nitrogen. So that's the purpose of this research. This south a few thousand stones that show such a consistent spectroscopy features and geological features. So I will just to show you some representative patterns. This is the absorption spectrum in the UV, I'm sorry, in the UV visible range. It showed a very gradual increase in absorption to the high energy side. And this explained perfectly why this diamond shows a beautiful canary yellow color. There's no other defects that could show in natural 1B diamond, such as the MV center, sometimes the vacancy like GR1. We don't see that at all in this group of diamond. Very smooth, explains perfectly this diamond shows this beautiful canary yellow color. In infrared absorption spectroscopy, it's very different from natural 1B diamond. These stones are dominated by A-form nitrogen. Here's the A-form nitrogen and even saturated in our spectrum. So it is not a type 1B diamond, it's actually type 1AA diamond. And with a very high concentration of nitrogen up to a few hundred ppm. But there's some other interesting feature here. You see a lot of small peaks here and the small peaks here. If we zoom in that area, we find a small peak 1344. That's from isotope nitrogen. Based on its intensity, of this peak, we can estimate the concentration of the nitrogen in these stones is about 2 3 ppm and very uniformly in many of the stones we analyzed. In addition to that, we see some other peaks. This is related to hydrogen in the diamond. And in 3000 wave number area, in addition to the hydrogen peak, 3107, we see this is 3300 wave number peak. This we know are related possibly to isotope nitrogen in diamond. Now, if we look at some geological features of this group of diamond, these are down view of these stones and collected under very strong UV excitation. First, they show this a green, very green fluorescence. We will explain later why they have a green fluorescence. And then a very outstanding feature shows their multiple nucleation centers. They are not started from a single nucleation center. Instead, they have multiple nucleation centers. So that's an interesting feature of this group of a diamond. When we look at the color distribution of this stone, they are not uniform, particularly in the big stones. This is a stone is about one carat. You see this, the color is concentrated in part of this stone. One reasonable explanation is this diamond has an old center that is a colorless 
and the yellow is the overgrowth, a later stage, a younger skin of the diamond, so that couldn't, that could have not enough time to aggregate it. So it could be an explanation for why this diamond was formed, but it may not necessarily be able to explain the stone when they are so small, like a one point in size. But as one possible explanation, explanation why ice nitrogen survived this process. The most important, I think, the most outstanding feature of this group of diamond, I like to, uh, to let you know, is they are very weak or no strain, no plast formation in this diamond. This image is taken under the closed polarizer microscope. The very strong yellow color is from the body color of the stone, but this is the gray area. It is from the plast formation. That shows the plast formation is very weak and is a huge difference between the type 1B diamond. That explains a lot of other geological features we are going to talk later. Another thing I want to mention is uh, 1B diamond is uh, dominated by sulfide inclusions, but this group of diamond is very common. We see some internal fractures that don't reach the surface of the diamond, internal, with a center with a mineral as inclusion inside. So here is just a, a C, this a mineral inclusion. When we look at the, take the Raman spectrum to see what they are, actually these inclusions are Calcite. Calcite is not a very common inclusion in nature diamond, but this group of inclusions are very common in canary diamond. This is the spectrum for the reference. This is the, for the inclusion. The peak matched very well, but they shifted slightly to the high weapon number region that indicated these inclusions are still under high pressure. Okay. From here, I'm going to show you some <coughs> photoluminescence spectrum of this group of a diamond, taking at the liquid nitrogen temperature, try to explain some geological features. And the 325 laser excitation, of course, we see the Raman 9, and then we see a strong S3 emission zero phone line and the sideband. This is green color. That explained the green fluorescence we see in the diamond view is from the S3 defect that's a liquid related defect in this diamond. And when we look at it with a 488 laser excitation, the most important I want to mention is this don't have no detectable H3, H4 defect. H3 is a two nitrogen and one vacancy, they need a vacancy, and H4 is a four nitrogen and a two vacancy. Because this stone has no plast formation, no vacancy clusters, and eventually they have no vacancy to form this defect, even they have nitrogen inside. If there are H3H4, we would see some emission lines here. And with the 514 laser excitation, we don't see MV centers. They should be here. MV centers are very common very strong in natural 1B diamond, but we see some nickel related peak again in this diamond. With 633 laser excitation, we missed the vacancy. It's a, we call it GR1, it's supposed to be here. We, of course, we see no vacancy. And the most important feature we missed is the H2 defect that's supposed to be here. It's a two nitrogen, one vacancy negatively charged. It's very, another very common defect in natural 1B diamond. So, if we put a summary together to compare canary yellow with type 1B yellow orange diamond, we see the difference in the nitrogen defect. Of course, the color is very different. And the most important thing is in natural 1B, we see strong plastic formation, but we don't see that in canary yellow diamond. Because of this difference, over the long geological history, we don't see this, we see these defects in 1B diamond, but we don't see this in canary yellow diamond. So that explained all of these geological features. There are some other features I'll try to talk a little bit more, is uh, sulfide inclusions are very rare, if any, in canary yellow diamond, but it's uh, calcite is common, and the sulfide inclusions are so common in natural 1B diamond. And the canary diamond have multiple nucleation centers, but usually we don't see this multiple nucleation center, or they are basically single crystal for natural 1B stones. 
I'd like to use this diagram to show the relationship between natural 1B and a canary diamond. So now we put these two together. Let me repeat what we see from natural 1B diamond with a little bit A4 nitrogen. We depend on the intensity of a plastic formation that will show um, brownish color or greenish color. Very few, even any of them can be called real canary color. But for the group of stone we studied in this study, they have very little isotope nitrogen with the right concentration that gives us a proper color, but they're dominated with the A-form nitrogen. In outstanding features, they have very little, if any, plastic formation, so that gives them the color in the real canary. So this is basically, I want to show the relationship, and the important thing there is a the gap. These two groups are not linked together. So basically, I want to conclude these two groups of diamonds, they are colored by isotope nitrogen, but they are entirely different group, could have formed in entirely different geological environment based on the impurities we see, as well as the inclusions we see from these stones. At the beginning, I said I want to challenge a little bit about the aggregation process in natural diamond. I want to show these two stones, and they show very nice yellow yellow color as well, but they are pure 1AB diamond. This is the absorption spectrum in the UV visible region. Basically, it showed you they are colored by isotope nitrogen, but these are pure 1AB diamond. So if we look at the infrared spectrum, now we can see here, it's a pure 1AB diamond, and when the, for this stone specifically, it's about 500 to 600 ppm of nitrogen, very high concentration of nitrogen, but Dr. Orika helped me to do the EPR analysis with, it has 3.7 ppm of isotope nitrogen that perfectly explained the yellow color. We look at a spectrum here, it has no A form, very weak platinum peak. So how do we explain the occurrence of a pure 1IB diamond with isotope nitrogen? So it is not remnant of the natural aggregation process, Probably not, because how can you skip the A center directly from C form to the B form without an A center left over? And also, we know it is not from HPHT treatment. These are natural diamond. We have enough evidence to show you they are natural diamond, but we are not going to discuss about that. We know HPHT treatment are performed at a much higher temperature, like a 2200 degrees C, as about a thousand degrees C higher than natural process. That could reverse the process, but this is not an explanation for this uh, pure 1IB yellow diamond. So what I'm speculating is that this process happened in this direction in the natural process, but it could happen from the B form, from a highly aggregated form, go back to the isolated form. So I'm thinking this process could happen naturally. So I want to put some conclusion here for the real canary yellow diamond. They show the distinct geological, geological, and spectroscopy features from type 1B diamond. The result of this study strongly suggests that this canary yellow diamond are formed in a different geological environment. And we know for the 1B diamond, based on Karen's study, we know that could be old and transport to a shallow cold place and stopped there. And that, so the ice and nitrogen could have survived the process. That's explanation for natural 1B diamond. For the canary yellow color, the yellow color could be from outermost layer young diamond that has isotope nitrogen. At least that's one explanation. But we know this disaggregation process of highly aggregated nitrogen that could happen naturally. So a natural process could disaggregate some highly aggregated nitrogen to the isolate form. So this study mainly will try to help us to study this naturally colored yellow diamond from isotope nitrogen, how to separate them from HPHD synthetic yellow diamond because they are colored by the same center. I'd like to uh, finish my talk with this uh, picture. And uh, Dr. Katusa, this is produced by Dr. Katusa about a month ago. It is the largest yellow synthetic diamond in the world. Ten, faceted diamond is a 10.06 K 
Kerr from the company New Diamond Technology. It's so very unfortunate that he couldn't be here, otherwise he would be able to show you many more achievements they have achieved in the last a few years. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Could you please just show that the first chart when it talked about what a, B, C, type one, so I could just put this all back together again, please. Sure. Sorry, can you give my slides? You mean this one or the next one? Okay. Any other questions? Actually, can you just re explain that at the bottom bar? Sure. Please? So we know the Nitrogen in Nature Diamond could have a three aggregation form, because C form is a single, A form double, B form four nitrogen plus one vacancy. So assume the nitrogen immediately after diamond crystallization, they all occur as a single form, like a single form. So during the long geological history, I put a PTT here, so pressure, temperature, and the time, the single form, two single form will come together form the pair as A center. The two A center will come together form is a B center plus a carbon interstitial. This is what geologists, many of us, including our gemologists, believe. This is the one-way traffic that happened from here to here. That's what we believe. And I try to argue this reverse process could happen. Of course, not a lot, but it could happen in some natural diamond that could help us to explain why some pure 1AB diamond dominated with this type of nitrogen still could have isolated the form to a few ppm that gives a yellow color. Yay. Emmanuel. <laughs> Hello, we thank you very much for what Edward Gublin would have called a most illuminating talk. Uh, I have a question, actually, your talk begs for that question, as you showed calcite inclusions. You have an interpretation for it being there. So the question is, uh, why where do they diamonds? come from? Yeah. Well, I probably not the right person to give you the, the answer because uh, calcite, carbon, carbonate, a fluid, and I believe it plays such an important role in diamond crystallization in the mantle. Uh, I don't really know, and um, but there are quite a few other people here who can who know better than <laughs> this uh, than me. Okay. So you probably want to talk with uh, our friends from Alberta and friends from Kanagi Institute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mark? Mark? Do you have yeah. any isotope data on the uh, delta carbon-13 for these uh, canary yellow diamonds to give a clue where the carbon comes from? Nope, not yet. But it's something we, we, we should do particularly with the, some with the colorless center and the yellow ring. Not all of them, some of them shows the type of feature that could give us some, uh, some indication. Actually, we have an intern from Alberta in GIA. She's working on similar, but, but she's working on what we call an ABC diamond. It has an A form, B form, and a C form, and she has some good samples. So I think uh, that's a good thing to do. Hi. Can you speculate what or suggest what processes can cause cleavage of the nitrogen-nitrogen bond naturally to form the single nitrogen. So your question is, the, you, 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 the term cleavage, um, I don't I fully mean, understand. Usually, usually you use HPHT mm -hmm. in order, for example, to produce some uh, single nitrogen in, to form the 1B. And the uh, material. How can it be naturally mm -hmm. when the diamond has an average temperature of 1,000 to 1,200 centigrade to cleave the nitrogen-nitrogen bond, which is very strong? Good question. Um, <laughs> well, I th first, we believe almost everything happens in the laboratory. It could have happened naturally, despite the pressure, temperature is very different. We also try to say, oh, this feature 
This spectroscopy feature is specific to a treatment, either irradiation or HPHT. But after a while, we find the same feature in natural diamond. I think a time could be a very important thing in making some process happen. And also remember other features, like a strong plastic formation. That could make the diamond lattice different from a standard lattice. And there could be some other features and we don't really know. Or local, a localized very high temperature in some area in the mantle, uh, or some other defects that could help facilitate this uh, desegregation process. So temperature is very different, as you mentioned. HPHT treatment is about a 2,000, 2,200 degrees C. That makes this chemical reaction reverse very easily, very easy to explain. But naturally, at a lower, much lower temperature, about 1,000 degrees lower, um, that at least there's some evidence to show that a process could happen to explain the pure one IV diamond up to a few hundred ppm of a B form nitrogen still has a few ppm of isotope nitrogen, but without detectable A form. One more question, Steve. These are such interesting stones geologically. Do you know what mines they're coming from? We know Karen's are coming from Zimmy, but not all these stones are coming from Zimmy, correct? I don't think they're from Zimmy. What I heard is are from Russia, from Siberia. So we are working on that to try to get some samples. We know which mine is Not yet. But uh, we have a good connection to find that information. One more. Uh, just to mention, <coughs> mention that there's also the same type of diamonds found in Canada, you know it. It's very small, very small crystals inverted cubes. Question for you. This black needle that you show the picture, and you know, we see sometimes in one bit diamond, is it really indication of one bit diamond? All the time you see black needles? I don't know exactly, but I think uh, Bob Croningshield described this feature in 1970s. So in the natural 1B diamond, you have the little and in this uh, 111 direction. What I think the uh, a possible explanation is uh, at the center of the little, there is a tiny inclusion. This inclusion expands so much when the diamond is transported to the Earth's surface at lower pressure, because it is a, the Borg modulus is very different from that inclusion with the diamond, create very big internal pressure. So that pressure introduced this needle, basically a small fraction of the diamond to release the pressure difference. But the pressure difference is not big enough to break the diamond. That will be my, my explanation. So it's a very common, as you mentioned, it's a very common feature for natural 1B diamond, and we use that a lot for, for identification. Thank you, Wei. Thank you very much, James. Thank you very much.